Now, when I learned after reading about Galileo's descriptions of the discoveries that he made centuries earlier, he had done the exact same thing I had done, turned it to the brightest things in the sky. Jupiter, Saturn, he didn't turn it to the sun, but the moons of Jupiter were his timepieces, his celestial diamonds. I had done the same thing as the great Galileo. Now, of course, it wasn't that I was originating these discoveries. Of course, he made them hundreds of years earlier. But I had the exact same visceral experience. I'm convinced that the great maestro did as well. And of course, it was cute that there was a connection between the maestro and myself, that we were both supported, in some sense, by Venetian patrons. His, the Doge and Senate of Venice, and mine, the Venice Deli. And I wanted to emulate Galileo in every way possible, except for that final last chapter of uh, home imprisonment and semi-threats of being tortured. <laughs> Let's avoid that. And even at that time, in 1984, Galileo had never been even issued a formal apology. He still hasn't been pardoned by the Catholic Church. But at least in uh, the late 80s, early 90s, uh, Pope John Paul did issue a statement that he was correct, if not actually pardoning him. Working on the dialogue with these phenomenal educators, Frank, Fabiola, Carlo Lucio, and Jim Gates, working with them really reminds me of what the word educate really means. The word educate comes from the Latin phrase educare. I think Fabiola could do a better job pronouncing it than I can. Thanks for your But that word means to bring out of, not to pour into. We educators are always searching for ways to enhance the learning process, to make it more visceral, more resonant with our students, in order to bring out the best within them. Imagine if you could replicate the thrill, the visceral excitement that the physicists at the Large Hadron Collider, including Fabiola, felt when they discovered the Higgs boson particle in 2012. You actually didn't have a single discovery event. But you couldn't even do that unless you happened to have a spare $10 billion or so lying around, and then you could roll your own LHC. But I doubt that's true for you. It certainly wasn't true for me. And yet, for $50, you can get your own telescope, and you yourself can replicate the feeling of discovery that Galileo felt over 400 years ago. How often is that possible in science? It's a very rare experience to have a connection in history between the first discoverer of something and a student. And best of all, if you do that, if you go out and buy a telescope, for you or for your own uh, children, you and I can be connected as well, feeling the same feelings that I felt, which is what I strive for in communicating the deep impact that astronomy has had on me. And we'll share it as two astronomers. It doesn't matter if you're professional or not. Once you unlock the mysteries of the cosmos through a small telescope, you'll be able to be bonded with all the astronomers throughout history. You'll become a universal voyager, just like me. So parents, any parents out there, go out there and buy a telescope for a kid in your life, or just get one for you. You can see the exact same objects Galileo saw 400 years ago, even from the middle of Manhattan. You can see the craters on the moon, the rings of Saturn, the moons of Jupiter, the phases of Venus, and millions of other phenomena. One day I'll start my own Keating brand telescope company because I've probably sold more telescopes to parents and friends around the world than Isaac Newton himself. What's it gonna take to get you into a Keating brand Star Spotter 2000? I'll include Simon Isaac and Undercoder, and I'll throw in these wheeled tripods for free. Remember, ABC, always be curious. Or is it always be closing? Basically, take the telescope out as soon as you get it, read the instructions, put it together, and point it at the first bright object you see in the sky. But not the sun, okay? <laughs> That's my only disclaimer. Warning, do not look at the sun with your remaining eye. I want you to be able to watch my Into the Impossible videos for decades to come. So there you have it. That's how I went from a pimple-faced pudge ball to a professor from a dweeb in Dobbs Ferry to a star seeker at the South Pole, from being a shy, introverted preteen to getting to hang out on Captain Kirk's unexplained TV discussing the wonders of the moon. And it's all thanks to a tiny little telescope that I got when I was a kid many, many decades ago. And I hope you will do the same for the child in your life. I'll put some links to great telescopes for any budget on my blog at briankeating.com. 
just click here to access it. Leave a comment in the comment section below about how it felt when you or your child first saw the craters on the moon. If you want to hear more about my astronomical journey, click here to see my Google Talk, or click here to see an interview with some of my astronomy buddies debating the greatest mysteries in cosmology and astronomy today.